Alternadad is for sale in the back, uh, and you may purchase it, and I will sign it um, at some point uh, in the next 20 minutes or so. Uh, but, you know, one of the best things about a reading is the, uh, the question and answer period. Uh, you learn so much about writers, um, what they're working on next, what books they'd rec what they'd recommend to a young writer who's starting out, um, you know what did you know how to get in touch with Dave Eggers? That's something I get asked a lot still um, for some reason. So um, you know those are the kinds of things you can learn. Also, but no, there's this additional thing with Alternative where I'm now also um, able to offer sort of parenting tips. So um, if anyone has if there you know if anyone sort of wants to just you know rap right now. I'm here, you know, that's, is that, that's a cell phone or is that like some sort of a, like mobile, mobile television <laughs> device? Okay, everyone has very sophisticated electronics here. Um, does anyone have any questions, though, they would like to ask? Uh, yes. So, uh, so. what's your take on grandparents? How useful are they? What is my take on grandparents and how useful are they? Grandparents come very much in handy. Um, for uh, babysitting purposes, <laughs> and um, also they uh, are good for purchasing expensive toys that your child wants, but you don't feel like paying for. Them. So um, my my parents in particular have been extremely handy, especially since we moved to Los Angeles because they live in Phoenix. So uh, you know, there's the weekend away is uh, a slightly greater possibility now. So um, no, grandparents are definitely definitely useful. Um, and also, it's nice for my kid to actually to know his grandparents. Um, you know, it's just to have another e extra male smell to sort of like have, you know, in his memory, deep in his memory bank. I think it's really important. So I don't know. My parents have been very good grandparents after their initial um, attempt to um, destroy my marriage by forcing um, my wife to have my son circumcised, which is chronicled in the book. But after that, they've been great. And my mother-in-law, who plays in the church handbell choir at her Presbyterian church in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, oh, this is on YouTube. Um, she, she's a, a, a really, really nice lady. Who I get along with great. Yes? Are we able to resist bringing a slideshow of photos of Elijah along with you? I, I've all, he, he asks how I'm, I think you all heard that anyway, um, able to resist uh, bringing a slideshow. I um, I don't really believe in exploiting my child for monetary purposes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, don't you hate it when people talk about their kids all the time? Um, also, just, I'm really like, just, you know, just carrying slides with you on me. But, you know, I don't, I'm not very good at AV presentations anyway. I think I hold the stage pretty well on my own. <laughs> Yes? What's your feeling on TV and kids? My feeling on TV and kids. It's definitely an essential part of every childhood's life, every child's life, I mean, um, particularly around dinner time and also first thing in the morning. <laughs> kids really love TV around those times of day. And also, they really, you know when they really like TV? On the weekends. And they like a lot of it on the weekends. Like hours and hours of it. Um, no, we actually, um, you know, I, I grew up... Uh, like, like all of us, you know, sort of grew up saturated with popular culture, movies, TV, music, video games, and I still like all of that stuff, and I'm not going to give it up just because I have a kid. Um, so, you know, we try to modulate our child's viewing habits, but it's, it's around, for sure. So, um, I don't know. I mean, I hate a lot of kids' TV, but uh, I also just, I just don't feel like it's any more harmful than anything else these days. So I, I don't know. We don't really have... So, there are times, though, where like he'll be watching too much because I'm being a little too permissive and my wife will get on me. Or she, he'll be watching too much because she's being too permissive and I'll get on her. So really, it really, it's also just an excuse for parents to nag each other more. I don't know. What's your opinion on kids and TV? You have a kid? Or two? Or one? You're all the trivia. Yeah, you. Yeah. It's, a, it's a topic of much debate in the house. Yeah, it always is. And you talk about it and talk about it, and then you turn on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> the, what's, what's your least favorite show? I've got a nine month old, so I'm not there yet. Oh, so you're still watching the Baby it's Einstein, still, yeah. Still debate. Um, well, yeah, once the kid starts uh, starts walking, it will stop being a debate. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you that. What's Elijah's favorite band right now? Elijah's favorite band. Um, well, I don't know if he has a favorite. He doesn't really understand exactly what a band is. Um, yeah, there are sort of two kinds of music we um, 
we listen to. One is um, old-time country western singer-songwriter stuff, which is really great for driving. Uh, there's lots of lyrics, and it's kind of fun to sing along to. And so, so we listened to uh, the Johnny Cash Children's Album, which came out last year. Um, we released by Columbia House Records. Uh, there's something called uh, Tom T. Hall Sings Songs for Children that we like. It's um, mostly songs about animals. Uh, there's this one about a basset hound who, uh, who, who um, ha is, uh, sings off-key at, at the farm, but ends up, uh, turns out that Johnny Cash needs a basset hound to sing, to sing on his TV show with him. So... <laughs> Calls up, he calls up uh, Tom T. Hall, who's the owner of Lois and George, the Basset Hound, and uh, Lois and George ends up going um, on the Johnny Cash Hour. So Elijah liked that sort of crossover. <laughs> like, Johnny Cash? I was like, yes, he's a real person. Um, and he's also like, Johnny Cash is good for um, discussing mortality with my son. He actually asked me one day in the car, he's like, Daddy, is Johnny Cash dead? And I had to so tell him, oh, yes, yes, he is. Then he was like, what is that? What's dead? I was like, oh, now I stepped into it. So we, I, I, won't, I won't relay the entire conversation. You can go, go to my blog and see that. But, uh, um, and then, so in, so in addition to the country western singer-songwriter stuff, then at home we, uh, we do a, while um, you know, dinner is being prepared um, or um, other distractions are necessary, I put on a, we have a sort of a garage rock hour. I um, play, um, I play song, rock songs for him that are about uh, space or monsters or, or um what else does he like? Uh, space, monsters, animals. Um, those are basically his main topics. So we, 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 we dance around the coffee table to Surf and Bird. He likes Surf and Bird a lot. And um, I don't know. Uh, uh, there's a, and there's a um, Social Distortion does a, a rock and roll Ring of Fire cover. And for some reason it was on my iPod and it came on and Elijah really liked it a lot. So we had to listen to it about ten times in a row. So uh, I don't know. He, um, he likes all kinds of music, really. <laughs> I never give a short answer to anything. Anyone else have any other? Uh, he's four, four years old. His birthday is Halloween. Yes, sir. I've actually been really interested in like the, the superheroes that he mm. creates. Uh, where do you think he comes up with all that stuff? I, I, I see a reader of the blog is here. Um, <laughs> yes, Elijah has um, has a universe of superheroes in his head. I call it the Elijahverse, and. Um, it is, it's a whole, it's like there's, there must be dozens of, like, heroes and villains. Um, I don't know, I mean, it, it's just, it's the way he sort of synthesizes all the weird popular culture stuff that, like, come, you know, gets shot out of him, you know, it's like, he, it's almost like he's paying homage to and making fun of them at the same time. It's like he's writing episodes of The Tick or something, you know, but he's, but he's three and four. Um, I don't know where they come from, but they're sure, it sure is fun to, like, you know, drive around with him while he recounts their, their sort of mythical battles that they have, um. The main character, who's your favorite? Hot Man. Well, of course, Hot Man is the uh, sort of the uh, Superman of the Elijahverse. He's got some serious powers. <laughs> yeah, he does. Um, hot power. <laughs> Which sometimes he shoots out of his finger and sometimes it comes from pressing buttons on his shirt. Uh, it's really unclear exactly what hot power is, but he also has the power, he also has the power to throw his, his enemies onto the floor of dust. Uh, he says, I will throw you on the floor of dust, and then you have to go on, like, basically, like, there's a crack between the bed and the wall, and I have to play on that, and he, like, and then, he, and then he's like, and now the mosquitoes are going to come eat you, and so then they're like, you know, they pretend mosquitoes are eating me, so, Hot Man, yeah, Hot Man's got a lot of powers, the, uh, the thing about Hot Man that uh, people wouldn't realize, be, just for me talking about him, is that his, uh, it's actually spelled B-H-O-T-M-A-N, um, one, for Halloween, Elijah wanted to be Hot Man, and uh, Regina is a, my wife's an artist, and so she was drawing the Hot Man symbol on a shirt. Hot Man's symbol is a uh, fire-breathing dragon, uh, that, uh, sort of in a crest. Except for when Hot Man gets sick, and then it turns into uh, he turns into an old knight, and the dragon turns into a snake that blows fire out of its butt. <laughs> and um, yeah, so uh, so he was you know she was starting to spell Hot Man, and he's like no. No, it doesn't start with an H. It starts with a B. Hot man starts with a B. And Regina's like, no, Elijah, hot man. <sighs> what makes the <sighs> sound? Hot man. He's like, no, it starts with a B. It starts with a B. And I was like, Regina, it's okay. The B is silent. <laughs> so, so now it's like hot man's slogan is the B is silent. <laughs> so yeah, so there's hot man. <laughs> There's Hot Man, and then there's his uh, arch enemy. You know who that is, right? Yeah, I can't remember. Uh, Dr. Boney. <laughs> B-O-N-E-Y. And Dr. Boney is an old robot. 
with blood on the outside and skin on the inside. His powers are sort of amorphous, but uh, he has 18 children. And then there's all there's other sort of subsidiary characters. There's like Hill Man, who's like the tallest mountain in the world. And he, he fights crime, but you know, he moves very slowly. Because like, he's a mountain daddy, he can't move fast. But his thing is that he's sort of like the... Um, Sort of like the uh, oracle of the Elijahverse for the comic books out there, geeks out there, you know what I'm talking about. He like monitors the crime all over the world from a sort of system of supercomputers that he has inside him. Um, so that's Hillman, and uh, there's there's, there's uh, plenty of others. Um, so I don't know, but it, it it's 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 pretty great, and I just hope I hope he doesn't lose it. Um, it's it, it's very possible that he might, especially if he keeps watching the fucking backyardigans, <laughs> which which are the, the the enemy of contemporary children. I think um, I won't go into that rant though. Anyone else? Any questions? Anybody? Anybody? Do you, uh, who are your, who are your yes. favorite writers? Who are my favorite writers? Um, my favorite writers. Uh, I like. Um, I like noir fiction the best. So my favorite writers tend to be like um, sort of crime writers from the 40s and 50s. Um, Patricia Highsmith, Jim Thompson, David Goodis, Raymond Chandler, et cetera, et cetera. They're sort of the sort of the the, um, the the people who sort of belong to that canon. That I don't know for some reason that that's the stuff that like resonates with me most strongly. And like I read all kinds of stuff, but. If I have to turn, you know, if I'm if, if given a choice, you know, I'll take a good, uh, good, good crime story any day of the week. You know, so my my of course my writing is I call, I kind of like to think of it as like parenting noir. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. You know, there's a lot of darkness in the book. <laughs>